Hi everybody, I'm Susan Mulvihill and I'm delighted to be back out in the vegetable garden today. I am going to plant my broccoli seedlings that I started indoors a few weeks back and today is their day to shine. When planting broccoli, there are two things that are foremost in my mind. First of all, the plants can get pretty large during the growing season, so I want to give them plenty of room to grow. Now I'm planting them in this three foot wide by eight foot long raised bed. And I'm going to plant them in a bit of a zigzag pattern to try to give them a lot of room, but still fit my 12 seedlings into this bed. The other thing that's on my mind is insects. Unfortunately, cabbage family crops are what I call bug magnets. So they can have problems with aphids, cabbage worms, and other types of cabbage caterpillars. And they can also have slug issues because slugs think these plants are delicious. So once I get these planted, I'm going to show you what I do to mitigate those problems. Okay, so here is the general layout. Now it's time to plant them. The first thing I want to do is make a hole about the size of this pot. I can even test it for size by slipping the pot into here. So that's pretty darn close. Broccoli and other cabbage family crops are not like tomatoes and peppers where you can plant them more deeply than they were growing in the pots that you started them in or up potted them to. So I can't really bury the stem like I would those types of crops. Okay. Now remember I was saying in a previous video, you never want to pull a plant out of the pot by its stem. So it's better to just kind of cover the top of the pot with your one hand, tap it on the bottom, and slide it out of the pot. There we go. Now look at that beautiful root system. I'm pretty happy with that. So here's my plant. And I will just backfill the soil around that root ball and press it in so it makes good contact with the soil. Okay, one down, 11 more to go. The next step is to water them in well, and I'm giving them a liquid nitrogen fertilizer at full strength. So this is Alaska fish fertilizer, and broccoli plants and other cabbage family plants really benefit from nitrogen fertilizer. Now let's talk about preventing insect problems. And I want to start with slugs. You know, they are pretty disgusting and they can cause a lot of damage to cabbage family crops and especially to young seedlings. Well, these guys here fall into both categories, so I definitely want to protect them. Now there are a few different ways that you can deal with those slugs. And the first method would be by sprinkling slug bait onto the soil surface. And I strongly encourage you to use organic slug bait. The non-organic types have an active ingredient of metaldehyde, and that is toxic to kids and pets. Yikes! And since you sprinkle it on the surface of the soil, I could see little kids popping it in their mouths thinking it's a treat of some sort, or dogs eating it. You don't want that to happen. Organic slug bait contains iron phosphate, and that is a natural substance. It is not toxic to kids and pets, so it's a much better thing to use. But don't go overboard sprinkling it all over the soil surface, because if you use too much, it can be toxic to earthworms, and you don't want that either. The second method would be to make beer traps. And what you do is you get 
either empty tuna fish cans or cat food cans, and you sink them in the soil so that the top rim is even with the surface of the soil. And then you'll pour a bit of beer into them, maybe like an inch depth. They'll smell that yeast, which is what they're attracted to, and they'll come to investigate, lean over the side to get a sip, fall in, and drown. So that's how that works. I know it sounds crazy, but someone figured out at some point that they are attracted to the smell of yeast in beer. I have a method that I've been using successfully for a few years now, and that's what I'm going to do to protect these plants from slugs. These might not look like much, but they work really great at repelling slugs from your plants. These are made from three inch diameter plastic drain pipe, and Bill cut them into one and a half inch high rings. Then what we did is we used some paper backed copper tape, which is very easy to find at garden centers and online, and we peeled back the paper on the back of the tape and applied this copper tape to the perimeter of the rings. The reason this works is because the skin and antenna of slugs reacts electrically with copper. They get a shock, they want nothing to do with it. So I'm going to put the rings around the base of each seedling and make a couple of adjustments to each plant and that will be my protection. I also wanted to add that these copper rings are a DIY project in my book, The Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. So what I do is I very carefully gather the leaves together and slide the ring over the seedling down to the soil. You can tell this is something you want to do right when you plant your seedlings. And then I just push it into the soil so there's no gap underneath because I don't want slugs to sneak in underneath that way. The other thing I'm looking for is do I have any leaves that are touching the soil? I don't have them in this case, but I do see this is going to be a problem on some other plants. You'll notice that this plant has a leaf that is touching the soil. When that happens, I like to call that a slug on ramp because a slug can be on the soil surface and just easily get up onto the leaf and gain access to the plant without having to go near or risk touching those copper rings. So when I have a plant like that, if I can't prop it up to where the leaf is completely off the soil, I'll just snip it off. I know that sounds drastic, but it actually works really well. They will grow new leaves very quickly. So then I can easily put the copper ring around it snug it into the soil, and this plant is now protected. Now, as you might guess, this is primarily an issue and something to keep an eye on while the plants are young. Once they get larger, their leaves will tend to stay up way above the soil surface. But do be sure to check on the plants every now and then with regards to the copper rings to make sure that there aren't any gaps underneath, and that you don't have any leaves touching the soil. Now all my little broccoli plant babies are protected from slugs. But what about aphids and cabbage worms? Well, I have a plan for that too. I have found over the years that the very best way to keep aphids and cabbage worms away is by covering the bed with something that's called floating row cover. That is what I'm holding here. It's a lightweight fabric that lets sunlight and moisture through it. And when you cover your seeds or seedlings as soon as you plant them, it acts as a physical barrier to keep the cabbage white butterfly away from the plants where they would lay their eggs, and it keeps the aphids away. So this is one of the options. And anytime you use a row cover, it's a good idea to put hoops over the bed and that's what you're going to drape it onto. Now last year I came across a product that I tested all season long and I am totally sold on it. It's called garden insect netting or agricultural insect netting or agricultural mesh. And it is like a very fine window screen and I mean super fine 
I used it over the broccoli patch last year. Not a single aphid got in. No problems with cabbage worms whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is first put the hoops over the bed and then I'm going to use the agricultural insect netting. You'll see it in just a moment. And that should do the job. Oops, I forgot there's some right next to me. So this is what the product is. I'll show it to you up close. And in this case, it's on a hinged raised bed cover. That's another do-it-yourself project from my pest handbook. And at the moment, it's just protecting some lettuce seedlings that I have, but I also use it to protect beet family crops. So beets, spinach, and Swiss chard, and that's to protect them from leaf miners. But for now, we're focusing on the broccoli. So here's an example of floating row cover in use. This is covering Bill's cabbage and bok choy plants and keeping the exact same types of insects away. Okay, first up are the hoops. And these are also another do-it-yourself project from my pest handbook. I didn't mean to turn this video into a commercial for it, but I've got all kinds of information for dealing with insect pests, and this is one of them. So these are made with one-inch black poly sprinkler pipe, very easy to find in home centers, and it's very inexpensive. Here it is, so you can see it up close. I love how easy it is to see through this netting because that way I can see how a crop is doing without having to lift the cover off. This has been UV stabilized, so that means it should last a few years, and it is extremely strong. So now I just have to drape it over the hoops, and the important thing with any kind of a row cover is that you want to weigh down the edges so it will not blow off in a windstorm because if that happens, it's not acting as a physical barrier against those pesky insects. Okay, the bed is all covered and my plants are protected. You'll notice that I've got boards on the long sides of the bed and bricks on either end, and that is to keep that cover on. I'll keep an eye on the plants, make sure they're doing okay. If I see any leaves going down to touch the soil, I'm gonna trim those off. I'm gonna watch for any problems keep them well watered, and also fertilize them on a, an occasional basis. Thanks so much for watching today, everybody. I hope you're going to feel more confident about growing cabbage family crops because now you know what to do to keep those pesky insects away. Happy gardening.